Hello, my name is Gabriel Meissner, and you are watching RPTV News. Today we will go to City Hall for the inauguration of the new mayor, Olivia Chow. On July 12, 2023, Olivia Chow was elected mayor of Toronto. In her speech following her inauguration, Chow underlined the key issues facing Torontonians, the housing crisis, a safer city, improve the transit system, improve city services, and of course, the budget deficit. Housing, safety, transit, and public services, while being citywide issues, have particular resonance with residents of Regent Park, where many people are low income and where the lack of affordable housing is an ongoing issue. Olivia Chow comes to the office of the Toronto Mayor with extensive political credentials, a school board trustee in 1985, Toronto City Councillor 1991, and as Member of Parliament for Trinity Spadina National Democratic Party, NDP, in 1997, 2004, 2006, and 2011. In 2014, Chow resigned from her federal seat to run for Mayor of Toronto, but lost to John Tory. Let's go to City Hall and see the inauguration for ourselves. <laughs> And welcome, members of council, elected officials, indigenous leaders, distinguished guests, and to all of those who are joining us by live stream this morning. I'd like to welcome you to the ceremony for the declaration of office by Olivia Chow to the mayor, uh, the office of mayor of Toronto. My name Hey! 
you. Please, please be seated, everyone. I'd like to acknowledge uh, the Young Creek Big Drum, who are Anishinaabe from the Wikwemakong First Nation. Thanks very much for drumming our mayor-elect in this morning. Welcome, everybody. My name is John Elvidge. I'm the city clerk, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today uh, for, um, for our ceremony. Um, I want to do that 21st century thing and ask you to please put your mobile phone on silent for the duration of the ceremony, please. Um, and now, it is my pleasure to introduce Jean Yoon. Uh, Jean is a renowned playwright, actor, actor award winner, and she is going to act as our master of ceremonies this after or this morning. Jean. Thank you, John. I am so pleased and honored to be here today as the host for this ceremony. What a beautiful, glorious, solemn, and wonderful day. We'd like to begin by first acknowledging that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And this territory is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. The city also acknowledges that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13, signed with the Mississaugas of the Credit, and the Williams Treaties, signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. And now to start us off in a good way, it is my honor to invite Elder Dr. Duke Redbird from the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation to provide us with an Oji uh, indigenous welcome. <laughs> My goodness, thank you for those kind words of introduction. Uh, I, I'm absolutely thrilled uh, and honored to have this opportunity uh, to welcome Her Worship Olivia Chow, Mayor of Toronto, at this, the Declaration of Office Ceremony. In my role as Elder of the Urban Indigenous Education Centre of the Toronto District School Board, I bring greetings from the urban indigenous community of Toronto. Olivia Chow and I have been friends for many decades. And more than that, Olivia has been a friend of the indigenous community since she was first elected as a board trustee 1985. So I want to take a few moments <laughs> to share with all of you a personal memory I have from a time when Olivia and her late husband Jack Layton came and visited me at my home in Madawaska, Ontario, near Algonquin Park. And every morning at sunrise, Olivia and Jack were in a canoe heading out on the lake. And I was especially impressed with their skill, their mastery, and navigating ability as they paddled their canoe out into the misty early morning waters of Bark Lake. And I was reminded of a teaching that I learned very early from the elders. Every endeavor that we embark upon, whether it be life, career, or an undertaking of great significance, such as holding public office, can be likened to embarking on a journey by canoe along an unknown river. The teaching I was given was to Take the time and with patience 
Choose the best materials that Mother Nature provided to build your canoe. The best birch bark, the best cedar, the best pine roots, and the best pitch. And with practice, acquire the experience and the knowledge to be prepared for the unexpected. The purpose of any journey is to reach a destination and accomplish a goal. On that journey, we find challenges like rapids, waterfalls, portages, and undercurrents that can pull us off course. But an accomplished canoeist is able to use the challenges to their advantage and navigate a way through to their destination. I'm confident that the same skill that Olivia has demonstrated on the lakes and rivers of Canada will serve her well in her office as mayor of Toronto or Takaranto. Her political canoe has been fashioned by the finest of materials over the years, the birch bark of compassion, the cedar of wisdom, the pine roots of humility, and the pitch of courage. Her experience, skills, knowledge, and preparation for this moment in history is without equal. There will be times, no doubt, where portages and great burdens will need to be carried to accomplish this journey. But Olivia Chow has honed her skills and has demonstrated her ability to trek the most difficult terrain. At this time, Olivia, I want to offer this traditional prayer and blessing to take with you on the journey that you are about to embark upon. O oh, my mother, the earth, O oh, my father, the sky, your children are we. And we are honored to bring to you gifts that you love. Then weave for us a garment of brightness. May the weft be the white light of morning. May the warp be the red light of evening. May the border be the standing rainbow. And may the fringe be the falling rain. Then weave for us a garment of brightness so that we may fittingly walk where birds sing that we may fittingly walk where grass is green. O oh, my mother, the earth, O oh, my father, the sky. Che Megwetch, and thank you. Thank you, Elder Redbird. What a beautiful tribute. It's now my pleasure to call on Sandra Whiting, storyteller, community programmer, president of the Project for the Advancement of Childhood Education, Can Childhood Education Canada, and prominent voice in Toronto's black community. Please come to the podium for the African Ancestral Acknowledgement, Sandra. I first have to say, Olivia, I am honored and delighted to be here. We have a saying from my country of Jamaica, and as a Canadian of Jamaican heritage, I want to share with you that the saying says, she little, but she talawa, and that means she's strong, she is mighty, she will be powerful. So I bring this, Land that now. Yes. I bring this land acknowledgement written by Kay Johnson. As people of African descent, we offer this land recognition in solidarity with the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island in the efforts and deliberate intentions towards decolonization. We acknowledge the land of Turtle Island that was never meant to be owned 
and we recognize that most of the land that was entrusted to the indigenous peoples was in some cases shared by choice, but all too often taken by force. We recognize the historical colonialism and the ongoing colonialism that has led to the present day situation where land acknowledgements are often offered in place of land. As people of African descent, many of us have come here by choice, while many of us were here as a result of historical force. We acknowledge the complexities where we were promised land that was never given by those whose it never was to give. And as people of African descent, we acknowledge the land of Turtle Island that sustains us and express deep gratitude to its indigenous peoples and pledge and honor to serve our dignity and divinity that ultimately connects us all. Olivia, Talawa woman. Thank you, Ms. Whiting. Uh, next, Elder Gary Sue and Grandmother Tina Sue of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation will now speak about the Indigenous Water Ceremony, which took place earlier this morning. And I'd like to also invite Olivia Chow, the mayor-elect, to place the vessel in its place in council chamber. seen a turtle put his back feet together, but he was a happy turtle. So we're calling upon the Anishinaabe and everybody else to make this journey with us as we go across this earth that has been given us to responsibility, that responsibility to look after in a good way. Miigwech. Thank you, Gary Sue. It is now my pleasure to invite the irrepressible Lillian Allen, Toronto po Poet Laureate, Juno Award winner and Professor of Creative Writing at OCAD University. She will read her poem, My Toronto, Poetic Justice.
Thank you. To ro to 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 and the beat of Toronto, a rhythm and a sway, cannot wait to be embraced. This diverse, alive, inverse city where trees grow around the cement. New selves in concrete, our feet against concrete as we go about our ways. Percussion, play, echo, 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 echo in. Artist, give soul, fullness to our city, and we learn to love what we have made, softening between brick and cement, a built-up world, steeples and steers, glass mirrors, uh, sparring for social change. Can you spare a little social change, please? A cup of tea, a place to live, a job, job? New voices roasted and wrapped in ice. My mother walked from the plane into a fridge that is Toronto in winter. The best of times, she says, and the coldest of times. And though many have dreamt of exotic shores, they came uh, on by plane and boat from fog. Or their parents did. Yes, our parents did. Because this land, indigenous, is promise. Our city, Takaranto, is magic, incubating a world of creativity and visionary relativities, ideas and creativity swirl, cultural voices unfurl, making us larger than we are becoming. Dub poetry, hip hop, opera, visual smarts, and community arts. Toronto in excelsis. You, Toronto, are my water bottle, my art square stencher. No matter how far I roam, you pull me back, 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 wide open arms, a union form. We make community a web of caring and connection seeping from the heart. And for those who have lived strident and have gone before, let their names not be forgotten, but be called who they truly are. Lovers of justice, this, 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 standing for peace, 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 not war. And to all the battles fought, freedom sought on the grounds of Queen's Park and Nathan Phillips Square, City Hall, or the roar of communities at Young and Bloor, down with inequality, injustice, this brutality, International Women's Day Parade, Caribana, Jump Up, Salsa Unsane, Clear, Scarborough Fest. You have made our city strong, a republic of possibilities, a home to belong. Fishing where? Fishing where? Fishing where? Fishing where? We are trees standing in the water, a gathering of tribes, an abundance of hope, a destiny and a destination from which a future must be forged. We were community before Simcoe. We were Hurons and visitors and traders, adventurers and underground railroaders. We are the Iroquois promise of unity. We are Kensington and Parkdale, Islington and Ellesmere, Palmerston and Jane and Finch, Don Mills and Eglinton. We are East York and High Park, Ricksdale and Regent Park, North York and Junction, Church and Wesley with unction. And you should continue this on. Whatever you are, yes, we are Malvern and Mon inside. We're Brimley and Bellamy. Whatever you are, whoever you are, we are all of it with potential aching to unfold. We are a three million sided heart. And homelessness is us. Our little scar crusting over. That part split off, lost, hiding, frightened, bruised, too tired to fight, or resolved too soon. Just needing a, 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 a little way back to the promise. Oh yes, 
We are the Superman, Joe Schuster, pen to paper, an experiment splashed by the waves of Lake Ontario, prancing for a great makeover. The postmodern, too slow a nation, it was no slam dunk, from William P. Hubbard to Zanana Hakindi. We are our parklands, winding creeks, nature's preserves. We are free public spaces, ravines of lush graces, protected wetlands, wetlands where the humber and the dawn. Fishing weir, fishing weir, fishing weir. We are a thousand miles from our longings, spinning dreams in over 20,000 street corners with many bridges yet to cross over. But we are the beat. A city in heat, alive, diverse, and strutting verse. We are new age digital microwave satellite communicators, fiber wave optics, print radio and television originators. And now, for better or worse, we are the AI, open AI chat GP innovators. <laughs> and in the flesh, right here today, we are our people's toil in this land. Together, our dreams are alive in this land. A three million sided heart is this land. We are Toronto, Toronto, resilient and strong. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Lillian. Can you spare a little social change, please? <laughs> and now the moment you've been waiting for, the moment I feel like I've been waiting my whole life for, to see this incredible woman, Olivia Chow, become mayor of my, the city that I love, that I've grown up in my whole life. The city clerk will now conduct the declaration of office. I, Olivia Chow, having been elected to the office of mayor in the city of Toronto, do solemnly promise and declare that. I, Olivia Chow, having been elected to the office of mayor in the city of Toronto, do solemnly promise and declare that. I will truth, truly, faithfully, and impartially exercise this office to the best of my knowledge and ability. I will truly, faithfully, and impartially exercise this office to the best of my knowledge and ability. I have not received and will not receive any payment or reward or promise thereof for the exercise of this office in a biased, corrupt, or any improper manner. I have not received and will not receive any payment or reward or promise thereof for the exercise of this office in a biased, corrupt, or any improper manner. I will disclose any pecuniary interest, direct or indirect, in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. I will disclose any pecuniary interest, direct or indirect, in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III. And I make this solemn promise and declaration conscientiously, believing it to be true and knowing that it is of the same force and effect as if made under oath. And I make this solemn promise and declaration conscientiously believing it to be true and knowing that it is of the same force and effect as if made under oath. And now, Mayor Chow, if you'll have a seat and sign the declaration, please. Thank you. And 
Now, Mayor Chen, if you would uh, take your place on the dais for the presentation of the chain of office. My friends, <laughs> today is a day for renewal. In the face of our shared challenges, the message was loud and clear. People want change. Over the past, yes, they do. Over the past few months, in the midst of a campaign that would determine the future of our city, something interesting even beautiful happened. We all found common cause in what we need to fix together. We have to address the housing crisis, to make the city safer, to fix the system, the transit system, to improve city services. The message was clear. We also have to deal with the budget hole, deficit, whatever you want to call it, left behind by the pandemic and our current reluctant partners in Ottawa and Queen's Park. And even in the face of those steep challenges, people send a clear message that change is not only possible, it's absolutely necessary. People told us that our efforts to overcome these crises should be strengthened and not abandoned. And they told us that we are always stronger together, that we need to work for change and not just stand by and give up. Because Toronto's story has never been about giving up. Toronto's story is of people who packed up what little they have and arrive at this place of hope. A story of hard work, determination, and a belief that Toronto is a place of belonging. <laughs> Toronto's story is also my story. A journey that took me from Hong Kong to an apartment in St. James Town, and now to this council chamber as your new mayor. <laughs> it's a journey that started because my parents imagined a city where the daughter could have a better future. That's what they saw here a future for their child. Imagine a young family arriving here today with the same dreams for their children, for a better future. I think we all know what they're up against. So let's imagine what could be possible when we meet our challenges with the boundless potential of our ideas and the strength of our collective action. Let us imagine that newcomer family has just moved into a nice, affordable, secure apartment in a friendly neighborhood with trees and parks, schools and libraries, restaurants, galleries, and shops. They can rely on the TTC to get to work on time. 
On, <laughs> on a hot evening, even in May, they can enjoy the local swimming pool. On a winter's evening, they could go to their local skating ring or local park. And their daughter feels safe riding her bike to school or taking the subway and has, yeah, and has many after-school activities, mostly very, very affordable. And, and when one of her friends is having a mental health issue, she knows the number to call to get them care and support. It's a good life, a better life in a city where they feel they belong, right here, Toronto. And that's a city worth imagining, a city worth building together, all of us. We can and must start by tackling the housing crisis. That's what the people demand because their suffering is real. Whether it's someone struggling to get off the street, women fleeing intimate partner violence, young people starting out, renters living in fear of van evictions, artists waiting to be part of a city life but can't quite afford it, or refugees like Christopher, who's with us today. Christopher. Yes. Christopher arrived in Toronto from Uganda. After a hard journey fleeing persecution, she arrived in Toronto knowing no one, but full of hope because Toronto is a safe place for for her. She couldn't find a shelter, so she slept on the streets. It was scary, it was lonely, it was tough. And it took weeks for her to find the safety and dignity of a roof over her head. Eventually, she was able to build a new life. And it's that experience that drove Christopher to found the African Center for Refugees in Ontario, whose motto is, a better world is possible. I saw Christopher two days ago with other folks helping refugees and homeless people find shelter. Christopher is even more committed now to working for people struggling to find a home. But she said to me and to all of us, we need your help. Last night, as you recall, it was raining, it was pouring. What happened to the refugees that were sleeping on the street? What happened to people who can't find a home? What do we say as a city to someone like Christopher. Her rise from the streets to serve others is an example of the best of what we can be. Well, we can answer Christopher with our actions. If she stepped up, if she stepped up to help, so must our prime minister. If Christopher stepped up to help, so must our premier. So must all of us, making sure everyone in Toronto can have the dignity of a place to call home. And, yep, we should, we have to. We've met big challenges before. Think of how we got through the pandemic, through trust, urgency, and partnership, both inside and outside City Hall. People came together, made sacrifices, and helped each other, care for each other. Imagine what's possible 
Imagine how great our city could be if we met our housing crisis with that same urgency. Mutual trust and partnership all across every levels of government. All of us coming together with a common cause, equally urgent. People need to feel safe in their homes, on transit, and throughout the city. Recent events have shaken our sense of security. And even though our city continues to rank among the safest in this country, that's cold comfort. Clearly, we need to do much, much more. As a start, we can improve our responses to emergencies, build and expand on our success of programs like the Toronto Community Crisis Services so that everyone can access a caring and supportive response when they're in a crisis. We can improve 911 wait times and build more after school programs. And of course, people say that we can come together and watch out for each other. People have also told us that we need to restore our transit system. People, yeah. People tell me that the better way feels so far away so long ago. Getting people moving with great transit will make a big difference in our lives. It will strengthen our economy, help businesses to attract top talent, create jobs across tech and other sectors. It will make life easier, more affordable. It's good to, for our environment, good for tourism, and for quality of life. But we can't get there alone. We need a new deal for our city. Toronto needs strong federal and provincial partners who recognize our city's crucial role in the economic and social life of our province and our country. Even with all the challenges we face, we can't forget all the wonderful things already happening. Recently, I met with people involved in the community-focused development model in Scarborough's Golden Miles. Many of you are nodding your head, you know. Where we saw United Way and other community service organizations sitting alongside corporate CEOs and developers. They're working together to deliver housing and economic opportunities to the area for the local residents because they know that they can deliver more for people when they come together and work together. That's the magic. We need more of their unity of purpose and action here in our city. It's what the people demand from all of us. Friends, colleagues, dignitaries, thank you for joining us today. It is such an amazing privilege for someone like me with my story to be standing here today and address you as your new mayor. It's I don't stand here alone. 
Let me tell you about my colleagues, but let me first start with Deputy Mayor McKelvey. Thank you, yes. Thank you for everything you did to step up when the residents of Toronto needed you. Thank you for being such a strong partner to me during the transition to office. I so look forward to working together with you in the coming years. Thank you for your dedication. And to each and every city councillor and their staff, your service, your dedication, your commitment to all your residents, and those long hours you do, wow, my deepest admiration and thank you for your service to the City of Toronto. And I know that I can call on you, your spirit of service, as we face the road forward. And it gives me great comfort. And to the Toronto's dedicated public service. Thank you. Yes, here they are. Thank you for your skill, professionalism, and dedication. I look forward to being your trusted partner in unlocking the full potential of what's possible for this city. And today, we commit ourselves to the hard work ahead. Together, our city can find its feet again, find our swagger, <laughs> give ourselves the permission to believe that together we can move the needle of progress for the people of Toronto. So to the public service, business and labor, civil society, community leaders, and the people of our great city, I invite you to join us. Let's build a Toronto that is more affordable, safe, and caring, where everyone belongs. It's <laughs> Together, we can, and today, we start. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Mayor Chow. Thank you, Mayor Chow. <laughs> I'm working on my Toronto swagger. I'm looking forward to the next three years as we become more affordable, compassionate, and dynamic. Thank you. So we're moving on. It is my, it, I'm very delighted to introduce Juno award-winning singer and songwriter and member of the Order of Canada, Lorraine Segato with Retro City. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-
forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please follow our social media platforms. For more information, check out our website.